Hell yeah, what's up guys? It's Curse Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action today, I want to talk to you about YouTube's recent update to their AI or altered content policy. On March 18th, they came out with a blog post that goes into detail around this. And while the blog post is pretty good, I was using the Heartbeat tool the other day and I came across a video by TubeBuddy. And I actually found about Eh, about 16 moments from his video that I thought were really well done and that you guys should definitely check out. So if you're a YouTuber and you're uploading content that has AI in it, that's one thing. But there's some weird edge cases out there where if you've got like VFX or maybe you've got a voiceover or even a voice translation and you have to label it, it, it just gets a little funny here. So let's go into TubeBuddy's video. We're going to look at some of the moments as he explains it pretty good. So here we go. All right, so if you're following along, just head over to the website here, h.ki or hkey. And then when I get there, you'll see here we've made a few updates to the UI on the left side or the UX. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and click on my heartbeat. And then from there, I'm going to click on moments. And when I do that, I'm going to have a whole bunch of moments here selected for this video here, which is the TubeBuddy video. So the first one here is called YouTube Update. And uh, they're going to discuss, well, the details of it. So let's click it off here. YouTube just dropped another update and it's a little bit of a mixed bag. There's this new rule around using AI in visual effects in videos. Everything from AI voiceovers to using VFX for yeah. realistic scenes. On one side, this is going to make YouTube a better place. But on the flip side, this is going to bum out a lot of creators. And there it is, guys. So... In a nutshell, it looks like YouTube is going a little over the top here and they're going to be labeling everything. And I get why they're doing it. Sometimes you want to, they want to crack down on people that are doing it uh, illicitly, like putting in fake backgrounds to, you know, do financial videos or, you know, they're trying to sell you something or, you know, they're doing fake updates to health videos where, you know, if you work out once every four years, you're going to be, you know, 300 pounds of solid muscle, et cetera, et cetera. So I get it. Let's go into the next moment here where he talks about some of the details and here you go. On March 18th, YouTube launched this new feature in Creator Studio. Now creators have to give their viewers a heads up when realistic content, content a viewer could easily mistake for a real person, place, scene, or event is made with altered or synthetic media, including generative AI. This is very vague. I'm going to state that right here. It's very vague. Now, when uploading a video to YouTube, creators will be asked, do any of the following describe your content? Makes a real person appear to say right. or do something they didn't say or do? Alters footage of a real event or place generates a realistic looking scene that didn't actually occur. So there's a big issue there, right? If you put, if you upload a video of you you know, out walking and then all of a sudden you take away, uh, you know, you take the background out and you put a different background in where instead of in New York, you're in Rome. I mean, do you have to label that now, even though it's, you know, clearly, you know, kind of funny or not intended to deceive people? I don't know. It's it's going to get weird. So anyway, so let's go forward here a little bit where he talks about generated labels, digitally generated labels. And then this label will appear that says sounds Weird. or visuals were significantly edited or digitally generated will appear above your video to inform viewers. Yes. So if you've done any psychology and you're familiar with labeling theory, you might be able to see where this is going, where when you label something, well, it, it doesn't always have the uh, good effect you think it might. For less sensitive subjects, this label stays in the description. But for touchy subjects like health or elections, It'll be right there on the video, telling folks that the content might not be authentic and should therefore be treated with caution. So for touchy subjects like like elections, for example, financial advice, people's trying to sell you financial packages or courses or health where you're doing, you know, fitness type related things and the, all the crazy claims people make with the fitness world. Yes, this this makes perfect sense to me. Let's get forward, though. We're going to go to a minute 45 uh, where he talks about VFX and translating. This is where it gets a little dodgy. You're using AI voices to narrate a factual script or you're translating videos into another language. Yep. Now you'll need a label for that. And it doesn't stop there. If you're tweaking footage, adding special effects, 
are using AI to whip up scenes that look super real, you're in this boat too. Pick Crazy. So for all of you motion graphics types out there and you cinematographers, if you're using green screen footage and stuff like that, wow, you're going to have to label your videos. Oh, it's, I mean, I don't know. This, this seems like it could be going a little bit into the overkill side of things. But anyways, let's discuss whether or not these should be labeled. We've got stuff like a bogus meteorite crash or visual effects to make city locations or illusions look legit. Do you really need a label for those? Given these labels are all about alerting viewers about potentially dodgy content, yeah. it's a little bit puzzling. Yet YouTube gets that not all artificially made content needs the warning. To so, so that's one of the good signs. It seems like YouTube is aware that they may be doing a little bit of overkill here, but... I mean, sometimes you got to throw the baby out with the bathwater, I suppose. Let's keep going a little further here for unrealistic content. For this out, they've got another checklist for content that they deem okay not to disclose. Right. This includes generative AI used for productivity, like generating scripts, content ideas, or automatic captions. Fine. That's one thing. We all use automatic captions. We could even automatic caption our own voices, and I mean... That's clearly done with AI. That's, yeah, this this could get messy. But let's skip, let's go forward. Like I said, let's talk about the unrealistic content and see where they land on this side of the debate. Clearly unrealistic content, such as an animation or someone yeah. riding a unicorn through a fantastical world, color adjustment or lighting filters, special effects like background blur or vintage effects. Like, come on, right? Like if somebody, like YouTube has movies on on YouTube, right? Whole movies, right? And if there's a funny scene or an animated movie, do they got to label the whole movie as AI altered content? Like, come on, let's just get, it's getting a little crazy here. So anyways, let's go forward here to uh, the content checks that the box does. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, here we go. Well, you'll see. What's been bugging me? There's loads of content out there that technically checks the box for yeah. disclosure, right? But they're not trying to cause harm or intentionally deceive anybody. Exactly. Like, take these channels, Big Muscles, which uses an AI voice for some solid fitness tips. And then there's Isaac from Azerbaijan. His YouTube education channel is one of my go-tos for genuinely helpful in-depth videos, even though it's powered by an English 11 Labs voice. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, all of these videos are going to get that label. I don't know. It's going to get a little messy here. Um, I'm going to finish this one off, though, with uh, his... He discusses that this is the first edition, first iteration of this from YouTube, and they, they're they looking for feedback, and no doubt they're going to change the policy up based on that. So here we go. Skipping forward to 353. First edition. I had a chat with a YouTube employee earlier this week, and they're actually looking for feedback from creators like you and me. Good. They want to know what part of this update is right. What's wrong, what's missing, what's confusing? I'll pin my personal feedback below the subscribe button. Drop your thoughts in the comments and I'll make sure that YouTube gets the message loud and clear. So there you go, guys. What do you think about this? Of course, I recommend you watch the whole video there. It's really, really good. These are some of the moments that I enjoyed out of it, although a lot of this video had a lot of great stuff in it. Um, personally, I get why YouTube's doing it, but it seems like they're being a little heavy handed based on my interpretation so far, and the fact that I have to put this in a lot of my videos is, is really annoying. So anyways, guys, there you go. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.